Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and there was a conversation yesterday that was sent to me a lot, like a lot. So I decided to look into it, and actually it is a very interesting story, so that is where we are going to jump in today. And that is that there is a version of Unity that has Nanite and Lumen and other technology built into it, and you can't use it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the case. There is a version of Unity in China that is a complete fork and has a whole bunch of special abilities that I think Unity developers everywhere else in the world were loved. And it all came down to this particular discussion over on the forums. This came uh, crossed over to Twitter, was sent over to me a number of times. Uh, and it is a very interesting conversation about this other version of Unity that is specific to Unity China. Now, what exactly is Unity China? Well, this is a joint venture that was started by uh, Unity. And basically, if you want to do business in China, uh, you have to partner with a local firm. It's just the way they do things. Uh, so you have to have... Um, a joint venture with other companies to do business there. And uh, Unity formed this new company, Unity China, uh, in partnership with a number of partners there, including Alibaba, China, China Mobile, Gbit, MiHoYo, uh, which is the makers of Genshin Impact, Oppo, and so on and so forth. So they valued this company at a little bit over $1 billion. Uh, this was announced back in August of 2022 that this was going to be formed. Uh, and then in September of 2022, it was done and set up. Now, Unity still owns the majority of this and control of it. So this is still a Unity company, but it has its own separate board, its own separate controllers and so on. Probably doesn't have a runtime fee. I actually don't know um, any of the Chinese dialects well enough to figure that out. I don't know any of the Chinese dialects at all. Just not going to mislead on that one. Uh, but it seems to be uh, there is a separate Chinese Unity division uh, and reported under Unity's profits, etc. that is uh, doing its own thing. And when I say doing its own thing, I really mean doing its own thing. So what they did is they launched at the beginning of this year, Tanji. Uh, which uh, is Tanji 1.0. This is a fork of Unity 2022. Uh, this is important on the one end because it's got support for backend platforms that are only relevant in China, WeChat, AliOS, uh, Open Harmony, and so on. But this is a special fork of Unity 2022 LTS uh, that has stuff specifically for the Chinese market. Again, a lot of that was the, these things like WeChat mini games, the, the not really relevant here. If you're wondering, uh, Tanji trans translates to Unity in English, so that makes sense itself, but they have their own fork there. Uh, and on top of that, it's got some other uh, functionality in there, so if you're making dashboards and so on. So that is what is going on there. And if it was just there, that there's a special fork of, of Unity that was able to uh, target some Chinese-only platforms, fine. Who cares about that? Well, uh, this is the part that gets more interesting. By the way, if you want to go ahead and grab it, you're going to have to VPN in. You're going to notice they've actually even completely rebranded it. So it's not Unity 2022 LTS or 2023 LTS or Unity 6 or anything, it is uh, Unity 1. So uh, they've gotten, they released 1.0 uh, back in December. The other nice thing you're going to notice here is their release schedule is a lot nicer than Unity is in uh, North America or Europe. Uh, so again, this is the version of Unity that we're talking about here, uh, Tuanji. Uh, so this is available here. If you want to go ahead and VPN in and, and you can navigate around the language, uh, you're going to find those things are there. But here, let's get to the interesting part. What are those special features that we are missing in the West? Well, we had a Unity open days from the end of last year, so this was a little bit before it launched, and we get some details of exactly what's going on. Now, of course, there is a bit of a problem here. I can't read any of this, so let's let the internet do its magic and translate this over into English. So there is uh, there's a lot in this one, but most of the most interesting things actually come from down here. So again, this is forking off of Unity 2022 LTS, and what new functionality are they adding? in. Well, that starts down, of course, you got some localization functions, you got some other platforms that weren't supported before. But here is where it starts getting interesting. First, we have virtual geometry. Now, this is when I say they have uh, a Nanite type solution. Now, this is it. Uh, obviously, Nanite is probably more uh, robust and powerful. And there are definitely some limitations to this. It is HDRP only, uh, and it has limitations and it is experimental at this point in time. But virtual geometry, we are uh, now getting demand not only from game industries, but other from developers 
developers in other industries where that colleagues in art or other related positions can put any high precision assets in the level without worrying about rendering performance or rendering quality. In this regard, uh, development has been started in-house and there are already certain results. HDRP pipeline is currently supported and it is hoped that an experimental version will enter the Chinese uh, version of the engine by the end of this year. So please wait and see. In the future, uh, we will also explore whether we can migrate some of the features uh, to mobile as well. So virtual geometry is again, one of the, uh, the star new features here. Uh, it is, um, yeah, it's basically their version of Nanite. I know, again, a lot of people in the West would absolutely love to see uh, Unity Nanite uh, in action, but unfortunately, uh, it does not seem like any of these functionality is actually going to come to the West. We'll get back to that in just a second. So that is the one uh, major announcement there. They have this Nanite solution, so you can use super high resolution meshes, and the game engine just takes care of it for you. Again, HDRP only at this point in time. But let's move on to the next announcement. Real-time dynamic global illuminations. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you have Unreal Engine's Lumen at this point in time. So we want worlds to no longer uh, a baked lighting, uh, so the lighting that um, was just removed actually from Unity. Uh, Unity, uh, the, the Western version of it is also getting something like this, by the way. Uh, it's just not as fast for sure. Um, so don't like bake lighting and lighting editors are WYSIWYG with support for indoor and outdoor. The team has already started work on real-time dynamic global illumination with the first goal of implementing these technologies in the HDRP pipeline and reaching demo status by the end of this year. Uh, again, keep in mind, this was published in 2023. Uh, then as with virtual geometry, we will explore options for implementing GI on mobile. So this is their Lumen type lighting solution that they have. Again, both are only for HDRP at this point in time, but hey, if you're on mobile, how about this one? Mobile ray tracing. So many teams make high quality games have expressed to us they want to find a solution for mobile ray tracing. I do believe in their, their terminology, mobile is URP and then HDRP is not mobile. I think that's how they've, they've split these things out there. Uh, so mobile ray tracing, many teams uh, that make high quality games have expressed to us they want to find a solution for mobile ray tracing and we feel this is a direction worth exploring for the engine. So we cooperated with MTK to implement mobile ray tracing on the the menace D90, I have no idea. Uh, the solution is based on ray query, support shadows, ambient occlusion, as well as reflection and refraction. And we expect to show the results of this year's China Joy, so stay tuned. Uh, so yeah, those are uh, the, the major technical things we've got going on. We got a bunch of other uh, developments here as well, if you're interested in other areas. And then we got some of the things that actually come from Unity itself. Uh, and then interestingly enough, they also have uh, their new uh, version of Unity AI, uh, but they're calling it Unity 3D Copilot. Uh, which should make full use of capabilities provided by large language models um, combined with our self-developed data system. Uh, we call the energy family bucket tools and system capability to achieve the goal of developing and creating through dialogue. So they are doing their own um, version of Unity AI as well on their end, but they're calling it Copilot. And I think that they've actually, in the Unity's code completion stuff here is a licensed version of Copilot. So that all kind of makes sense. Got some cloud editing tools going on, et cetera, et cetera. But I think obviously the big tools that, that they've developed for China market that are not coming here are this virtual geometry, uh, which is basically, again, a nanite-like solution, real-time global illumination, which is basically a lumen type situation. And then of course, the mobile ray tracing, and uh, you may be wondering, okay, so what is the deal here? Are we going to get any of this? And this is back to the original discussion about all of this. And we do have a Unity employee here active. Um, so a not an official spokesperson, and remember the announcement, uh, this is not global Unity. Unity China has its own CEO and board. So they're building a customized local version. I wouldn't think there would be an expectation that these features would be part of a version of Unity outside of China. They are a business set up to specifically ch serve Chinese creators and or users. It is very cool to see what can be done with the engine editor given a team that can focus on and perform that work. That feels like subtle shape, to be honest. So uh, yeah, they're, they're iterating very, very quickly. Uh, it looks like Chinese version of Unity is going to branch so rapidly from the Western version, and it looks like it is getting features people have asked for for a very, very long time. So I think, think that was actually quite interesting once I dug into it even more. So that is uh, Tuanji, uh, the new version of Unity. By the way, if you want to check any of this stuff out, it is available at, I think it's Unity. CN. Uh, and if you're going to download anything, you're going to need to have a, a VPN to do so. But as you can see here, the other thing to keep in mind, Unity CN is also a, um, their, um, 
a reseller of all Unity products. So normal Unity is all available there as well. But they've created their own engine uh, and it's a fork of 2022 and it's getting lots of features and functionality that we don't get. Okay, now this is just, this is Gagaya, uh, which Unity killed that. It would just kill me to find out that Unity China is continuing the Gagaya project. I know that would just piss off so many people. Uh, but yeah, I figured I would share that with you. If you want to go ahead and check it out and you can read the language, you can do this via VPN. I can't read the language. I ain't checking it out. Uh, but yeah, they have a, a Lumens type solution for HDRP. They have uh, a Nanite type solution for HDRP, and it sounds like we're not getting any of that. We are getting our own thing, so there are some things coming in Unity 6 uh, that are similar to this that were announced at Unite, but I think that pretty much every developer in the West would love to have all this technology, and it sounds like we're not getting it. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.